uh, time marches on and we wanted to talk about the Biden appointees. Meet the new boss, same as the old boss. That's a uh, who uh, greatest hit and it applies here. Uh, with the new appointees who are getting their hearings in front of the Senate today uh, to discuss this with us and to give you some background on some of these people. They may be unfamiliar or you may have forgotten them uh, in the last 40 glorious years. We have uh, Cassie uh, Smedley. She is the new executive director of America Rising Political Action Committee. America Rising, that's the political action committee that uh, is basically op- does opposition research on the Democrats. Perfect person to have with us to uh, refresh our recollections, as they say in court, about these people. Thanks for being with us, Cassie, Cassie Smedley. Yeah, hey, Allie, great to be with you again from this new post here, but we're doing kind of the same game, just from a, a different player on the board. Yeah. Well, that's good. We, we don't have that much time, and we have a lot of people to get through. So let's go through the greatest hits of some of these uh, Biden nominees. Uh, we'll start with a uh, nominee uh, for the Treasury Secretary's job. Janet Yellen, a veteran Democrat hack who's uh, almost as old as the uh, president himself. <laughs> That's right. So she's, and one thing, a common denominator of so many of these nominees is that we've seen them before, whether we saw <laughs> them in the Obama Biden administration the first time around, um, or whether we've seen them over the years. Um, but many of this kind of revolving door idea. So Janet Yellen falls into that, of course. Um, now, attempting to be the secretary of the treasury and um, of note in her hearing today, and it could have just been, you know, the word didn't come to her. But one thing was that when she was asked uh, by Senator Sass about China um, and all of their human rights violations, she um, stopped short of saying that they had committed any acts of genocide, which is something that the State Department, of course, came out this morning and said that they, in fact, had. So, um, those they're, the they're sterilizing. Bad. They're sterilizing sense. Uyghur women, yeah. correct? And yeah. and their one child policy is is a terrible human rights abuse. Even though Biden has uh, basically said he wouldn't say anything about it. How about how, how about Cassie? How about the fact that she earned more than what seven point two million dollars in speaking mm-hmm. fees? over the past two years from uh, Wall Street firms, including uh, City and Goldman Sachs. Yeah, so again, that's the exact type of thing that we're keeping a real close eye on. Who are these folks beholden to? I personally think you should be beholden to the American people. But in their time since they've been out of public life and they went into the private sector and they made some money, and who, um, how did they make that money? And what did they talk about? And these are issues, whether it be with Janet Yellen or you're talking about Tony Blinken, of course, the Secretary of State, or... Um, Mayorkas, who's over with Homeland Security, all of these folks to say, what did you do the first time around that you were in public office? Where have you been since? And what do the American people need to know about your relationships and who you may still um, have, have ties to? And so those are all things that while everybody is focused on the ceremonial uh, transition with the inauguration proper, the ceremony of it tomorrow, these things are still happening. Um, the news media may not give them the top headline that they should, because these really affect our lives. And the policies of the Biden-Harris administration, we know, are going to have a significant impact on our lives, and it's significant who they're surrounding themselves yeah. with. Let me give you one more uh, yeah. quote here. I'm looking for your, your greatest hits uh, compilation. Yellen mm-hmm. said in a 2018 interview that her ideal fiscal policy would be to, quote, raise taxes and cut retirement spending. That's easy for her to say when she's made $7.2 million in the last year, isn't it? Not so easy for uh, people who are uh, struggling to get by on uh, – you know, uh, so Social Security and uh, maybe a, uh, a modest 401k. Let's talk about Anthony Blinken. He is another uh, longtime hack, used to work for uh, National Security Advisor for uh, Joe Biden. When Joe Biden was advising President Obama not to take out Osama bin Laden. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so one of that is the biggest thing against him is that he was on the wrong side of things when um, there was the rise of ISIS. Um, so that was, um, he is somebody that has a lot of known things on him. We'll be getting to him uh, more, I think, as confirmation hearing is going on right now. But again, back to this common denominator, these are folks we've seen from and heard from before. We saw what happened in the Obama-Biden administration 
four years ago, um, and so many of their policies, which put us, put us in a detrimental position, not just around the world, but here at home as well. And so we're looking at that again, uh, to how they are going to try and reestablish, re-implement some of these policies, which were so detrimental after we were just starting to get back on. And, and one of the great disasters of Obama age forward policy was letting the civil war uh, unfold in Syria, it destabilized not only the entire Middle East, it destabilized a lot of Europe because it led to the, uh, to the, to all the uh, migrants going over, and many of whom were terrorists, mm-hmm. it's the, the Europe is still reeling from the Obama era, uh, Obama administration's mistakes. And this guy Blinken, who's going to be the Secretary of State, he oversaw the red line. Remember, uh, Obama said the uh, okay. if you cross the red line, they'll they'll be. And then they crossed the red line, the uh, the the uh, uh, Bashar Assad administration, and nothing happened. So let's go. Let's move yeah, on to the I, director of national intelligence, uh, Avril Haines. You know, President Trump talks about it, and, and, he, and I and I congratulate him, and I, I I'm so happy he ended the endless wars. Avril Haines, the new uh, director of national intelligence, is a proponent of endless war. Correct. Of endless wars. Um, I think that she has made those comments to that effect. And again, um, she's one of these two who, as she was previously in public life, then she left. There's this company called um, West Exec that they set up. And this is where a lot of these folks came, went and hung out for a while. There was an interesting exchange um, today that she was noted as a principal there. And she um, only re- only reported to work maybe one day a month. So she got um, almost $55,000 for a couple days of work, as it a turns month? out. And so, again, they've just been a month? Uh, one day a month. No, I believe that was her. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to tell you wrong, Derek. That's uh, not as much as Hunter months. Biden got for doing no days a, a month <laughs> from Burisma. And I, it's interesting that you bring that up as well. You know, this is something, too, that we're keeping an eye on with, you know, the Biden family, which we talked about on this program Um as well as it should have been talked about a lot more, a lot of other places, wherever their um, dad, brother, uncle, cousin wins, the Biden family went too. sometimes literally on the plane with them. And other times you saw it happen in business um, dealings and relationships. So that's something that we're also keeping a close watch of. And they need to know that, that things they might've been able to get away with because they had a complicit press who wasn't connecting those dots or was looking at other shiny objects. Now, they're going to have the pressure put on them. So all of these things, these confirmation hearings unfold. So part of our work at America Rising with the Biden Accountability Initiative is to look at what happens to when they start instituting their policy initiatives um, and to make sure that the American people are aware of it as well. I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're going over these, uh, the, these facts because people aren't going to get them. Certainly, they're not going to get them on uh, the, uh, the super spreader uh, cable t- news networks, and they're not going to get them in their daily newspapers. Let's go to the uh, the new nominee for Department of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. And he's he's had a good yeah. couple of years here. He's uh, really cashed in big time. Where What's he been doing the last few years? Again, you're talking about this common theme where... The revolving door. The revolving door, that's right. Isn't, it, hasn't there been anybody new to enter public office in the last... <laughs> For eight years, you wouldn't know it looking at these guys. But, uh, yeah, so actually, let's back up a little bit. The last time that he was in public office, uh, one of the things that he has now been, um, that he's come and have to deal with is that he gave preferential treatment on um, H-1B visas. And he has said, oh, it's for compassion and humanitarian purposes, but there are those who say otherwise. So this is something looking into. It's also people are keeping a close eye on what he would do with our border security. You want to talk about migrants in Europe. Of course, now we're seeing um, after things laid relatively dormant the last four years, there's a migrant caravan heading towards the United States. Right. Why do you think that is? Because they've been told by Joe Biden himself that the United States would be a more compassionate country to them, giving pathways to citizenship almost instantly. Yeah, let me so let me read you. Uh, let me read read everybody something. This was from an ABC News ABC News investigation uh, about the DHS under his uh, his watch when he was running this uh, this this H one B one visa program. DHS quote ignored pointed warnings from federal agents and approved visas for immigrants suspected of having committed fraud money laundering, and even one applicant with alleged ties to a child porn website. 
and uh, he's been a lawyer since uh, the last two years. He's made over $3.3 million just in the last two years as a corporate lawyer uh, representing and advising companies such as Airbnb, Northrop Grumman, the, the, uh, the aircraft manufacturer, T-Mobile, and Uber. So he's a man of the people. Nice work if you can get it, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and finally, That's absolutely right. finally, we have uh, the, uh, the, the uh, defense secretary uh, designee, General Lloyd Austin. Tell us about him, Carrie. Yeah, so the first thing that you're yes. going to hear about him um, is that the House has to approve a waiver because he was um, most recently serving, he was serving in as an active duty in the military within the last 10 years. So they need a waiver. General Mattis had to get that as well. And the House looks like they're going to bring that up. But they were trying to fast track it. And um, some people were saying not so fast. One of the most notable things, I think earlier when we were talking about Mr. Blinken, I inadvertently told you about ISIS with him, but this is really Lloyd Austin. Um, so he was on the wrong side of the ISIS decision while the rise of ISIS was happening. He um, was noted as being someone who didn't do much about it. Um, and so that is something that he's going to have to answer for as well. We know that that was an incredible blunder of the Obama administration, that ISIS was on the rise. We talked about the red line earlier with Syria and Assad, and the Obama administration didn't do anything. And um, people like then General Austin were um, at, at the helm during some of those decisions. So those are some of the answers that he's going to have to sit for when he has his He, he apparently, according to my speech, one of my texters, Cassie, he apparently also called ISIS a flash in the pan. It was quite a flash in the pan if you were in the areas <laughs> they took over. It was more like a guillotine in the pan. And they, he was nicknamed the Invisible General. And, and this is something your, your press release reminded me of, which I, I, I'd forgotten. Back in 2015, it came out that the U.S. had spent uh, $500 million to train some of these resistance fighters to uh, Bashar, Assad, Bashar Assad in, in Syria. And that only, that only trained like a handful, probably uh, fewer than 100 soldiers who, of course, as soon as they got uh, into battle, they just threw down their uh, rifles and ran away. 500 million bucks. And that was his, I guess that was his, uh, propo his program. Total waste of money. To do it. Right. And remember, you know, that takes us back to a time when our military, they weren't engaging. You've heard a lot of people in the time since um, from the military who said that the rules of engagement were really problematic because the Obama administration um, essentially said, don't do it unless you're fired upon. And so how do you um, build uh, a military which can protect and defend that they're trained to do and that they want to do um, when they're not able to do that. And so that's a big question for him um, as he faces his confirmation hearing uh, any moment now. Cassie uh, Smedley, thanks so much for being with us from uh, from America Rising PAC. Uh, this is a great, uh, great organization, and uh, th this is great stuff you're doing, getting this, this information out uh, beyond the, uh, the boycotts of uh, big tech and uh, the mainstream media. And uh, so where can people go if they want to learn more about America Rising PAC? Well, certainly AmericaRisingPAC.org. We also have um, America Rising LLC. You can find us on Twitter. We're still one of the few that hasn't been banned. So check us out there. Um, and hopefully, again, on your show very soon. All right. Thank you, Cassie Medley, Smedley, excuse me, from, uh, from America Rising PAC political action committee. Thank you. Sticking to your new year's resolution is a matter of making one right decision at a time. You have to do every, it's, it's like the 12 step programs one day at a time. Don't, don't give up your, your new routine uh, because the first day you do it, you'll feel bad and it's easier to forget about it. But here's an easy routine to pick up and that is to eat better and feel better and that involves, for me, Super Beats heart chews. I've got them right here in my hand. Look at them. They're uh, very, uh, very small. They're wrapped like in foil, like uh, candy. You can just pop them into your pocket when you leave in the morning. You just take two a day. I take one before my bike ride in the morning and one before the show. And uh, it's it's great. It's great stuff. And the the reason it's it's good is because it it's not like candy. It doesn't just taste good, although it does taste good. It makes you feel better. It's great for your heart health. It's good for your circulation. It's good for your blood pressure. Just two Super Beats heart chews per day give you the cardiovascular support and promote the heart healthy energy you need to chase your goals. Uh, Taylor, you're, you're taking two a day, right? I am going to have my second very soon. It's the middle of the week and it's that four o'clock, five o'clock feeling where you're just feeling a little bit draggy. So 
I got to pick it up. I've got to drive home eventually, so I'm going to make me take some Super Beats. I think I'm going to have a third one as soon as I finish this spot. Super Beats Heart Chews combines non-GMO beets and clinically researched grape seed, grape seed extract shown to be twice as effective at supporting normal blood pressure as a healthy lifestyle alone. When it comes to implementing healthy habits this year, adding Super Beats Heart Chews to your daily routine is an easy decision to make. And now you can get a free 30-day supply of Super Beats Heart Chews plus a free 30-day supply of their new delicious flavor, Super Grapes, when you first with your first purchase by going to superbeatsradio.com slash Howie. That's two free gifts valued at over $50, only available at superbeatsradio.com slash Howie. That's superbeatsradio.com slash Howie. I'm Howie. Car. A nightmare to liberals everywhere. He's Howie Carr. 